right, episode 15. We got same breakfast each day this week. It's a one and a half cup egg whites and my omelet, half cup in my oats with four and a half ounces of chicken breast on the omelet. That's the cooked weight, uncooked, since meats lose about 25% of their mass after cooking um, or through cooking. It's six ounces raw. So always calculate your weights based on raw weight. We're gonna cut up an onion, throw some toppings in it, and uh, get this rolling. I uh, try to find more free audio, and once again, I was copyrighted on episode 14. What's funny is it was only the last like clip of music to cover up the leg day noise. And it's really funny because I'm trying to not uh, let the music in the background of the gym get me in trouble because it's playing. <laughs> and then I don't want it to be dead silent. And then the fucking video gets flagged for the music I try to cover it up with. So we got those egg whites going. We're going to throw some oats in here. 80 grams with 400 grams of water. And we'll do that for... Uh, five minutes and then I'll cut up the ingredients for the, uh, the omelet. I'll make sure I put all the macros and timestamps in the description. So if you want to just fast forward to things, then you're more than welcome to. So five minutes for uh, oats. When you do one cup with 400 grams of water and then I'll let that keep going until it's uh ready to get topped and I'll catch back up with everybody. Boom. All right, so almost almost done. Our toppings on. So we're gonna put our half onion. I don't use the whole half of the onion, whole half. I use the rest of it in my salads since it's a low carb day today. The meals that change are my meals two, three, and four. They're all salads with one tortilla, so I have a little bit of carbs throughout the day. I believe I'll have, all my macros will be in the description, but I consume about 300 grams of carbs on non-training days. I'm not trying to get completely flattened out by not eating enough. Four and a half ounces of chicken, evenly spread out across the omelet, as evenly as I can get without it hanging off the edges. because I didn't do it perfectly yesterday. The timing was just a little off, but the top of the omelet was cooked through perfectly. And you wanna add the ingredients while the omelet's eggs are still a little bit wet. So that way they have uh, something to bind to. So we're gonna throw some cheese on here. Cheese is like your glue. So evenly distributed, it'll hold things together. Unfortunately, I only get 28 grams of cheese, so it's not a ton. And the omelet, or the uh, eggs just finished, so I'll add some egg to that in a second, or the uh, oats, I'm all over the place today. Must be hungry, skipping over thoughts. So dill weed, I like to season with dill weed, a pinch of salt, nothing too crazy. I get about six, seven grams of salt a day total sodium intake. Sprinkle of some powdered garlic. You don't want to put too many seasonings and too many flavors on your foods. Otherwise you can't delineate where the flavors are coming from or what they are at all. We got that. We're going to put 30 grams of a uh, Dijon mustard in the omelet or six teaspoons. I figured out that it's like the perfect amount. And this is like my second binder and glue for the omelet, kind of what else holds it together. The surface tension of the, the Dijon mustard is what sticks the rest of it together, like Elmer's glue. And then lastly, our Rotel tomato quarter cup. This breakfast lands me at about 850 calories. Once again, that'll be in the description. This omelet alone accounts for like 100 grams of protein. 
Love a high protein breakfast. And then we're gonna fold this in half. Perfect. She looks great. Push some of the toppings back in a little bit. That's what you want your omelet to look like. So turn the heat off and let the residual heat keep it going. In the meantime, I'm gonna add the remaining half cup of oats, or half cup of egg whites to my oats. I'll microwave it for another three minutes and I'll show you guys what I do when I add my ingredients to finish off my chocolate oats. All right, so the oats are done cooking. I'm gonna put a splash of water in here to make it a little easier to mix everything in. But what we put in our oats, espresso powder, two grams, 14 grams of cocoa powder and a metric ton of Splenda. Two, uh, two teaspoons is about two grams of espresso powder. There's not really any calories in it, so I'm not too worried about having to weigh it perfectly. And then cocoa powder. I didn't realize there's fiber in this. Five grams, who would have known? Pretty cool. And then Splenda. You can always add a, like a pinch of salt to taste. They always say like an eighth teaspoon is like pretty good in your oats, enhances the flavor. And this is my 850 calorie, 100 gram protein breakfast. So I'm gonna mix or whisk these eggs in. Or uh, shoot, man, I keep calling these oats eggs. So I'm gonna whisk the oats and then I'll get it all plated up and I'll show you what my breakfast spread looks like on the daily. Finally, here's the spread. You got the chocolate oats, one cup with half a cup of egg whites. We got the one and a half cup egg white omelet with four and a half ounces of chicken, our diet Coke that's also caffeine free. And that omelet looks beautiful. If you want the macros, they're in the description. You guys, meal two, three, and four prep coming up next. All right, so we're prepping meals two, three, and four. They're all salads today with one flour tortilla at each meal, just a little texture, something to enjoy. I could probably do something like croutons, but fuck it. So we're going to put <clears throat> a little bit more than one romaine lettuce heart in each. Uh, these romaine lettuce hearts this week looked a little like small. So we're gonna cut up about four of them and get them divided up. All right. So each meal gets lettuce, uh, a third of a poblano and a third of a uh, bell pepper. Make sure you wash off your produce. I feel like I'm gonna say that forever just to reiterate and have your best chance of not ruining three, four days of progress by having to deal with, uh, what do you call it? Bacterial infection from uh, salmonella or E. coli. Salmonella is not completely cooking your foods. E. coli is uh, basically getting fecal matter on your food. And unfortunately with produce, uh, you do have to fertilize your food and it's very easy to get fecal matter on it. It's easy to get fecal matter on your food by not washing your hands or keeping clean surfaces. They find that cutting boards have a ton of E. coli on them if they're not cleaned regularly. I clean my uh, cutting board every single day, soap and water, and I scrub it thoroughly. So, you know, if you care about your health, that means more than just eating clean food, like healthy food. That also means like literally eating clean food. So we're gonna divide up this romaine, big old handful in each. <clears throat> then we got six ounces raw weight or six ounces cooked weight of chicken breast, which is eight ounces raw before you cook it. So there's about 60 grams of protein in each meal. This bowl looks a little light, so I'm gonna take out of this one, and a little out of this one. Since there's like less appetite, like it's just not as appetizing to eat uh, lettuce than it is to eat rice. 
I definitely eat these meals slower and the extra fiber certainly makes them more filling. I thought that these digested fast, but honestly this week after having rice meals, holy cow, those things digest too fast. It feels like I'm so hungry after I eat them. So when I uh, start bulking up, adding uh, calories in, in the off season, I'll start uh, incorporating carbs in those meals, two, three, and four, by adding probably 100 grams of rice per meal, uncooked weight. Um, it's more accurate to measure your rice uncooked, especially if you cook it fresh every day. And that's a quick way to add uh, like 70 gar grams of carbs per meal. And then uh, what else? I'll probably add some toast to my breakfast. And if I were to, like yesterday I ate 3,300 calories. I still ate under maintenance at 4,000 calories on Monday, my high carb day. So in the off season, I'll slowly increase my training days to all be close to maintenance. And then my, uh, my days off from training will still be low calorie so I can, you know, maintain insulin sensitivity and I can uh, get some digestive relief, you know, let my stomach slow down for a day and not have to do so much, you know, digesting. And then as we get later into the off season and I'm past the maintenance phase point, I'll start to, uh, what do you call it? I'll start uh, having high carb, high calorie cheat days. So I want to get all my days, I want to get like eating 4,300 to 4,500 calories per day on training days. I want my off days to be about 3,000 calories. And then after that, I'll just see how much food I can add on training days, what I can tolerate. And my last resort will be to add uh, calories on non-training days. And I'm going to try to keep uh, cardio in in the off season just to maintain heart health. It'll be more like hit cardio, very short, just to spike the heart rate and sustain it for a few minutes. And then I'll have maybe like one day of moderate Low, uh, low intensity cardio, just to do a different form of cardio for the heart. So we're almost done with the base salad assembly. Didn't put enough poblano on this one. So I'm gonna take some of its friends and spread them out over there. All right, so that's the base salad. Next, I'm going to assemble the uh, salad dressing. Okay, so the salad dressing is pretty straightforward. Let's move some of these so I can make some space for a second. There we go. That's better. All right. So we already got that quarter onion in here. I measure everything else in grams today. So I'll leave it on the gram side. We need 167 grams of corn. Might be this whole container. Well, I'm just going to add a couple extra grams of beans. So instead of 163 grams of beans or 183, I'll add uh, 200 grams. Ooh, one gram off. 183. You know, actually, I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to just open up another can, drain it, and then I'll start the video back up. All right, corn is drained. Yeah, you don't want to be lazy. You want to, uh, you know, get everything accurate. So I had 157 grams of corn. I got to add 30 more grams of corn to make it 187. Come on, baby. Come on. There we go. All right, on the spot. So we've got corn and black beans so far. We're gonna add the rest of that can of Rotel tomato. Hundred and seventy-one. There's a little liquid in there. That's four more grams than I needed. Oh no. 
So then we're going to juice a uh, lime on here. I'm getting a little better at making these videos, I'm starting to timestamp and like cut out the parts where I'm just talking too much. Cause I can't think of someone who wants to just sit there and listen to all that shit. Five grams of, uh, or one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, six tablespoons of light sour cream. So that's 90 grams. There we go. 90 grams, got that down. Ooh. And next is just seasonings. I don't really need to weigh these, but two teaspoons of cilantro dried. We're going to do a teaspoon and a half of smoked paprika. This is where you're going to get your Mexican flavor is the cumin. We're going to do two teaspoons of cumin. It always smells like BO to me for some reason, but it tastes good. Just taste, it just smells weird. About three quarter to a half teaspoon of garlic powder. And then a dash of ground black pepper. It's better fresh, but I don't always feel like grinding it. And then a large pinch of salt. We're going to mix that all up and put it in the salads and then we'll cut up the chicken and that'll be it for the salads. All right. So, Here's meals two, three, and four. I don't work out today. I do have some tissue work to get done, but we got our 600 calorie salads, slightly less actually, but got salad, poblano, bell pepper, the dressing, and then six ounces of cooked chicken on top. And we got one flour tortilla to eat with each. And those are gonna be the meals throughout the day today. And uh, we're gonna try to get about a gallon and a half of water in today. Since I'm getting tissue work, you really need to stay hydrated. You want to look at it as similar to doing another workout in terms of something to recover from because of the muscle damage. So I'm going to try to get two gallons of water in today. And today, since it's less carbs, I hopefully lie in, uh, weigh in at my lightest tomorrow. We shall see. But uh, not sure what I'll update other than this and then my French toast for tonight. But that is my low carb day this week for the carb cycling diet. So we got the one cup of egg whites, 230 grams mixed up with Splenda vanilla extract, cardamom, and depending on how many slices of bread you give yourself will depend on how much you want to soak them in this. If it's four bread slices, for example, here, then you can just go ahead and dunk it around all you want. If you need to get it in the pan faster because you have four more slices to dunk, you know, don't go too slow. Square pans are the best because you can cook the most slices all at once, and that's pretty much it. Just put them in there and let them cook at a medium temp until they unstick from the pan on their own. And then flip them. You'll see me dust them with cinnamon and then pretty much it. And now they're all in the pan. I poured the remaining egg whites on the slices since this is only for four slices of bread and I'm about to do mine, which are eight slices. But just dust them with some cinnamon, flip them when they unstick from your good non-stick pan and then soak them in Walden Farms maple syrup. Pretty good stuff. It does have a little bit of an aftertaste. So here's though. a great example. You can smell they're ready, but you can just shake them so clearly they're very ready to flip. So we're gonna take a look at the other side. We should use a spatula, but we're gonna, yep, and that looks good. They're ready to flip. Mm, here is the final reveal. Booyah.